Hi, Chris Good here, and we're continuing in our video series of how to make electric guitars using Fusion 360 and a CNC milling machine. This is step three. In the previous video, we went from a two-dimensional sketch that we imported and modified into a three-dimensional body. And uh, let's go back and we're going to make that body the active component. And there was our sketch. There we go. Now hide the sketches from the main component. I'm going to hide this sketch as well, so we're just looking at the body. Um, the next step in order to start machining uh, this out of a piece of wood is to go over to the manufacturer side. We used to call it the CAM side, the computer aided machining side. We're going to go to the manufacturer side and the first thing you need to do in this um, workspace is to create a new setup. So you'll see setups right here doesn't have anything under it. We need a new setup. And um, this setup defaults to having the model orientation with the y-axis being this way and the x-axis being this way. I'm, for my own reasons, just going to set this up in a slightly different way on our CNC. I want it to be facing this way on our table. And um, so I want to swap the x and y axes. The, or the origin that you're seeing right here is the origin for the manufacturing. And I'm going to change that. So I need to be able to select my own y-axis. And I need to actually turn the sketch back on in order to do that. So i turn sketches back on. And for the y-axis, I'm going to select the center line that was on one of those sketches. And you see it's defaulted to the y and the x is going in the right direction, the z is going in the right direction. Uh, you may have a different CNC than we do. We use Joe's CNC plans. We use those to build our own uh, 48 by 54 inch CNC. Um, we use a touch plate to zero out the bit when we start carving. So I want the origin to be here in the corners, which is where the touch plate fits. So I'm going to um, take my origin as a stock box point, but I'm going to change the box point from a point on the center of the box to a point over here on the edge. Um, the, now that we've got our origin set up and our orientation correct. I want to change the dimensions of the stock because that's not actually what I'm working with. Um, this uh, program defaults to a relative size box with one millimeter offset on each one, but I've got a guitar body blank that is a different size. So um, it is, first of all, it's not in millimeters, so I want to change that to inches. That's interesting. All right, that canceled out of our setup, so let's fix that once more. Oh, that's exciting. You get to see us do this all over again. There we go. And the box points here. And the dimensions of the stock are going to be fixed. The width on the x-axis is about 15 inches, and the depth on the y-axis is about 18 inches. So that's what I'm working on. That's the actual piece of wood that I've got, and the height of it is exactly 1.75 inches. So it's exactly the, thick, the thickness of the um, model, and I planned it that way. So I planed these things down until they were the right height so that I wouldn't need to do any other clearing. Uh, you can do an adaptive clearing pass or a facing pass before, you know, if you're working with stock that's like eight quarters or um, thicker, but I honestly find it a lot easier to uh, plane with the planer and to CNC with the CNC machine. So um, that's pretty much it on the setup side. We've got our origin in the right place. We've got the measurement of the stock. You do want to make sure that, um, at least in the x-axis, right, that the model is centered. If it's offset from some side by some odd bit, 
So my stock actually has the center line right in the very center of the stock. So I want to make sure that I'm not offset, that I am centered in the stock, and then that's going to line up right on the seam uh, between these two boards that I've made. OK, so we're going to click OK. I'm going to hide those sketches from the other model just for now. All right. So. Um, we're really only going to do two types of cuts here. We're going to do pocket cuts to make these pockets, and we're going to do a contour cut to cut out the shape of the guitar. Uh, now, when you actually put this on the CNC table, on your CNC, you're going to want to secure the stock to the table. We've tried a lot of different methods at Decatur Makers, our makerspace. We're using this really awesome double-sided carpet tape that is extremely sticky. We're also reinforcing that by screwing parts of the um, stock directly to a spoiler board um, before we get started. And what, whatever method works for you, just keep in mind that if you're clamping stuff down, those clamps um, need to be out of the way of all the tool paths that you're going to create. Uh, because we're uh, screwing the corners and uh, taping across the middle of the model, um, I don't need to worry about uh, collision with one of the clamps. Okay, so how do you do a pocket cut? It's a two-dimensional operation. I know it's you're going down into the third dimension, but really the path itself is just a, a 2D pocket. And this is the dialogue that you get when you create a pocket. Uh, and the first page is the tool page, so we have to select our tool. Now, if you've never seen seed before, um, you're going to need to make an inventory of all the bits that you have. And you can edit bits and add new bits um, with this dialog right here, right? If we wanted to create a new tool, we'd give all of the dimensions of it right here. I've inventoried all of the bits at Decatur Makers and also my own personal library of uh, CNC machining bits. And I'm going to use a longish quarter inch uh, flat end mill to do these pockets. It's going to cut with straight walls and a flat floor, and that's what I need a quarter inch at a time. All right, so I've selected the bit. You have this coolant operation here. If you leave it on flood, it's not going to change anything. We don't have coolant, so I could select disabled, or, um, but I'm just going to leave it alone. This is also where you set the feeds and speeds. Now, these are tied to the different bits that you've got, so you could edit these. But um, I know mine's all dialed in. I'm going to be cutting just under 40 inches per minute, and so I'm just going to leave this set. Uh, if you don't have your speeds and feed, feeds dialed in, uh, you should look at a speed and feed calculator to make sure that um, for any particular uh, rate of movement of the bit across and uh, rotational speed as well, uh, you'll want uh, those to be optimal for the type of material that you're dealing with. And that's a whole other series of videos. Okay, let's look at the geometry. So right now we haven't selected any pockets yet, but I'm about to. Um, I'm just going to click on the outline of the pocket at the bottom of each one of these. There we go. And just click right there on the neck pocket. That's pretty good. Um, so that's what it's going to cut out. I don't need to worry about heights. Those are already sort of uh, dialed in to where the bit is going to raise, right, when it's going in between these pockets. You just need to make sure that's above the top of the stock, um, where the stock top is, and where the um, uh, sort of safe distance is for the bit to, to pull out, to retract. Okay, so those are all dialed in. I don't need to change any of those. But I do need to change th something on passes. First of all, I need to uncheck stock to leave, because right now it's set to leave two hundredths behind um, on the radial side, that is um, uh, along the axis of the, the radius of the bit, uh, and along the long axis of the bit as well. It's also leaving two hundredths. I don't want it to leave anything. I want it to cut it exactly as measured. But I also don't want it to be super aggressive, so I'm going to do multiple depths, and I'm going to have roughing step downs of 0 0.12518 of an inch, which is half the diameter of my quarter inch bit. I also want to turn on both ways, 
right? So if you mouse over this, it tells you exactly what it does. Um, when it's going down there, instead of going from one direction to another and then resetting, it goes, like it says, both ways. And that might speed things along just a little bit. I think that's about it for the pocket. Let's see what we get. Okay. So generate a toolpath pretty quickly. Um, I'm actually going to right click on this and check the machining time for our pockets. And it looks like about 32 minutes. Not too shabby. You can also um, simulate these and you can see what your tool is going to do and the order in which it's going to do it. And you can change the speed of that. And that's what it's going to do. Pretty nifty. All right. There's two other paths that we want to do. Um, we need to do um, these holes for the strings to come through. We need to do the holes for the mounting screws as well. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch bit for that, but these are also pockets. It is going to generate a warning because it's going to go all the way through the bottom of the stock. Um, but um, as long as it creates a toolpath, it's going to be okay. So let's go ahead and select from my library the um, eighth inch four flute end mill. All right. And that also doesn't have coolant in it. It's cutting at 65 inches per minute feed rate. And we're going to select these pockets actually from the other side because we want it to go all the way down to the bottom here. That's the tiny ones. And here's the big ones. Same as before, and this one's even more important because this is um, a very tiny bit and it's very delicate. So I want to make sure that I'm doing multiple depths. I say 0.1 inches. Is the, that's the maximum step down that I want the bit to make while it's cutting through. And I'm going to uncheck stock cleave as well. That should be it. And just like I expected, there's that warning there. Let's click on it. Cannot plunge outside stock. All right, so that's for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different uh, holes that we're cutting. And that's OK. If I preview this, do the simulation one more time, it's actually doing what I wanted it to do. Okay. Now you will want to make sure that you use a bit that's long enough to go all the way through without the holder running into the material. So be careful with that. There's one more cut that we've got to do and that's to cut out the uh, shape of the entire body. So this is a contour cut and we're going to go to 2D and select contour and we're going to use our quarter inch flat end mill again and disable that flood and for the contour selection we're going to select the entire shape there. All right, once more, we're going to use multiple depths, and we're not going to go any deeper than um, half of the diameter of the bit down for each cut. Whether you use tabs or not depends on how you've got your material secured. So um, if your stock here is uh, screwed down to the spoil board. Uh, you probably don't need to use tabs unless you haven't otherwise secured the stock to the board. We use double-sided carpet tape. It works really, really well on our CNC. So we have strips of tape on the bottom side here securing this to the spoil board. Um, the problem is that we're going to make a cut all the way around the entire thing. And when it gets down to the bottom, that if that last little bit comes off, the body's going to start rattling around inside, and um, you could damage the piece or damage the bit uh, or damage the CNC. That would be bad. 
Uh, so you might want to consider adding tabs. Let's lose the contour there. Let's see. Um, there we go. So we've got uh, our contour again. Make sure our pass is multiple depths, 0.125. And if you wanted to add some tabs, you'd do it here. You can change the size of them. They're doing um, 1 8 inch tabs. You might want to go a little bit longer than that, 0.5 or so. Um, you might want to go a little bit thicker than 0.03. So if you want to do that, you can actually put the tabs wherever you want. So you could put one back here. You could put one here on the side. You could put one right here. And maybe one up here too. All right, let's see what it looks like if we did that check out what this toolpath does. So it's cutting everything but it's leaving behind see it's skipping this part right here and that's where the, it's going to be still attached to the rest of the um, to the rest of the stock. Um, I'm actually not going to use any tabs so I'm just going to delete those. I'm going to uncheck tabs, recalculate the toolpath and get a little bitty preview here to see what that's going to look like. Simulate that looks good. Round and round it goes and when it's done you've got this guitar. Alright, fantastic. Um, that's it for this part of the guitar. You've got a guitar body now. Um, you'll notice that uh, I didn't actually program in a fillet to round over the edges and that's because we have a really nice router and router table at our makerspace and it's so much faster to use a router to do roundovers than it is to program the CNC to do it even if it's something like really serious. Um, this telly also doesn't have um, this portion um, cut down for the arm uh, like you would see on a Stratocaster and also doesn't have a belly cut. Those are things you can totally do inside Fusion. You can actually tell it to uh, take that out instead of um, make the CNC do the cut instead of uh, using some other tool after this is done. Um, but we're not going to do that in this series of videos. Um, we are going to explore two-sided milling in the next sequence of videos which has to do with cutting the neck. But you don't have to cut your own neck at this point. You've got a body of a Telecaster that looks really really good. You could actually buy a neck. Um, there are a lot of good neck dealers online. Making a neck is a lot harder than this part, than making the body. Um, and the first project I did was to cut out a similar style body and bolt on a neck that I got from Warmoth. Um, they make really, really good necks. At least the one I got was really great. And it, it fit right in this pocket and it plays just beautifully. So that that's a really great guitar. They're not super expensive. Um, but if you insist on doing the entire thing yourself, stay tuned. Because in the next video, we're going to start building the neck itself and the fretboard. So we will see you on the next one.